The Gina and Maddie podcast. Are you one of those people, Maddie, that washes your car every week or just <laughs> when it's muddy looking? I, I, to be honest, I cannot remember the last time I washed my car. I'm, I'm terrible I'm, too. I don't, actually don't wash the car. I think I just wait for like, Days like oh, this. Well, the rain is. That's what I said. Thank you. Yeah. The rain is washing the car. But then, but my old man was like, "Oh, the rain actually makes the car dirty." You know? I know. No, I don't actually care, Dad. I've got three kids under nine. The car is filthy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, we're not really those people. And the yeah. guy that lives across the road from us washes it at least once a week. He's out there polishing. Oh, I see those He's people. They car, love it. They love they? their yeah. cars. They get I, the turtle wax and the chamois. Oh, and they, oh, they love it. it. Yeah. I, I want to. If they love it that much, they can do mine as well. <laughs> okay. Is what I think. But I, yeah. I took Rod's car because we went away to Byron Bay on the weekend, and we were. Oh, I thought, and I thought we were taking his car, so I washed his car. Turns out we took my car, <laughs> and Jackie took. The new clean car, our right. car that was anyway. I took it to the car wash. I have got this unreasonable fear of the car wash because I think I had a bad experience one time. So you know, no, when it's you, the auto, like the automatic one, not the one where you get out and scrub yourself. Oh, oh, the, both a little, but the oh. automatic one because I can never line the wheels up. Because what are your chances of getting the wheels right on that thing? I can't. Yeah. Like it just, we know how you park the car. So yeah. It's, it's, well, yeah. Imagine me trying to get it, and then you get it back, back, and then the old mate mm. comes in. No, no, back. No, no, Ford, and then I get stuck, and I've got it. So I just refuse to go through that, especially in Rod's car, because his, his car's really big. Mm. So I don't. So, okay, I'll do it myself. But his car's really big, so I can't get reach. The roof. Oh, yeah, I can't reach the top. I'm nah. just sort of mm, ho- hoping for the, the best up there. <laughs> it was. Yeah, who can, <laughs> who can, no one can see it. Are you cleaning the roof for the birds? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It was quite the job because it hasn't been done in a long time. But I also have this fear of when you're in the bay as well, if someone gets behind you and you're taking too long, that bothers me. It makes, makes me a bit. You stuff them. Stuff them. <laughs> stuff them, Jeffries. And then how much money? Like, how can you guess how many coins to put in? Yeah. I mean, you're trying well, to... And who has coins? That's the other thing, I too. had to go to our little coin... We've got a little coin jar at home, so I, <laughs> I took the coin jar with me. Yeah. And then not knowing how many how many coins... Had to save some for the pokies. Can't use them all. Can't use them all. For church, sorry, for church. And next Thursday. Anyway, so I'm trying to do it in time. But, okay, I got through. I didn't want to take too long. Because if you're going to spend too much money, you might as well have just tried to drive it through the $20 one. 100%. So I'm going... Going as fast as I can. Then I get to the um, vacuum department mm-hmm. straight ahead. Yeah. That stupid thing runs round and round and round and round. And then I put my money in. I made the mistake of not clearing the car out first. You know, when you, you should get all the rubbish out the, first. Yeah, yeah. So I, I parked and the vacuumy thing's on the left. So I... I turn the vacuum on. Now, I put $4 in, so I'm going to have to go very fast because that's not very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I go I go around the other side. Like I've started, my, started the passenger seat. Yeah. I push it through. I go around the other side. By the time I run around the other side, the snaky vacuum thing's back down on the ground over near the passenger seat. Yep. So I've got to run back around again. It kept falling back out. The, you know how it's it's sort of windy and stuff. So by the time I get around to grab it, it's on the road again. So I run back around again, put it in, go back, gone oh, again. This sounds two exhausting. Dollars, there's $2 gone. Me yeah. just trying to get the thing over to the driver's side. Then I did it again, this lovely man in the car next door. But when I got around the other side, he mm. passed it through to oh, me. No. He, he was so nice. It felt sorry for me. But then I'm just cleaning it out. Oh, now Rod McCormack, my husband, mm-hmm. I'm going to throw him under the bu- under the car wash bus <laughs> at the moment. I went through, you know, the middle where, like, normally you'd keep the, CD, the center console. Yes, yeah, CDs and maybe you know, a, <laughs> uh, if it was the nineties. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In there, so often in our family, Maddie, Mm -hmm. I'm on a diet, so it means Rod is too. Ah, yeah. So I think I know where this is going. He hides stuff. Secret snacking. I found in that middle chips, melted chocolate, biscuits, and I told Rod, and I said, "You are disgusting." (laughs) You should see all the stuff I found in the middle console of your car. He goes, "Biscuits? What come with it?" Gina and Maddie. We're going to chat to someone uh, pretty pretty crazy, if you ask me. Alone, Australia Season 2 hit 
SBS uh, a couple of Wednesdays ago. You can catch up on SBS Demand. This time, 10 Australian survivalists have been dropped into the extreme and wild terrain of New Zealand's South Island. It's a 10-part documentary where participants are completely isolated, it's Gina. It's crazy. Yeah, they're stripped of all modern possessions, contacts, comforts, and they self-document. So they're on their own. Yeah, they, so they've given a camera, they self-document their, their experience. They're in the wild for a chance at winning 250000 the last season that was done was in Tasmania. It was uh, Gina Chick who won it. It was fantastic. I think she's doing a podcast. They have to deal with things like dehydration, yeah. starvation, relentless rain. You saw someone getting medivaced out in the last yes. episode. Yeah, you had a heart incident and, and you have got a, a way of getting out if you have to. I think they've got one of those phones if they have to, but oh! Boy, oh boy. No way. How we're, scary would it be? We're about to chat to Andreas, who is a contestant in this season. I feel free. I feel trapped. I'm hungry. So scared. I feel a bow motion coming on. Ten brave Aussies will take on the South Island of New Zealand, ah. separated from each other and the rest of the world. It's not more time to die. Wow. Uh, joining us online is Andreas. Hello, mate. Hello. How are we doing? Really Hi. good, mate. Now, first things first, why? <laughs> um, so I listened to your little intro there, and I, I listened to it. I thought, that sounds like a great holiday to me. <laughs> I think there's a special kind of person who will do this, obviously. But I think all of that sounds fantastic. Like it's an opportunity to sort of step out of model, modern civilization and, and, and really try to do the best you can and, 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 and push your limits. I take it you're not like an office job kind of guy who doesn't really like bushwalking. Like adventure is your thing? Adventure has always been my thing a little bit. I sort of grew up on a countryside back in Sweden. Fishing and being a Boy Scout, um, I sort of spent more time in the bush than I did in front of the computer when I was young. Um, and then I just never grew up. I, I guess, Andreas, if you, you love the extreme holiday. You must find it hard to find friends who want a holiday with you. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised how many there are. Even in the middle of Sydney and even in the middle of like the sky rises, the corporate guys, there's always a couple of people out there who enjoy doing the same thing as you. And then, then there's always a gradient, you know, how far do you want to push it? And I think the, the, the participant is in, in alone, um, sort of just prepared to push it that little bit further. So you must have, like, incredible mental strength as well as physical strength to be able to do all that on your own. And, you know, were you afraid at night? And, and did it feel like forever or did it go fast? I wouldn't say I have, you know, greater mental or physical strength than the average person. I, I think, like, I, I work in a gym and physically fit, uh, and I think that's a benefit. Yeah. Um, being physically fit just makes everyday tasks out in the wilderness a little bit easier to handle. Like, um, um, it, it, no one, I've said this before, like, no one, no one thinks that, I wish I wasn't that strong or I wish it wasn't mm. that fit. Like, that, that's just a bonus. The mental strength, I think, is an individual thing. I think... Uh, I've always been quite confident in myself and my abilities, um, and I wouldn't say I walked into it worrying. Like, obviously, you're entering an area which you've never been, and that's the whole point of it. Like, you, you're doing this so you can find out how do you react under stress, how do you react under these circumstances. You, you're basically not going to get an opportunity to try this out. There's <laughs> no one, no one sane enough to just do it on your own, like take your holiday and then just jump out in the, in the woods and, mm -hmm. and, and starve yourself. But in, in the format we're doing it in the show, like it's, it's, an, it's a once-in-a-lifetime once opportunity for someone like me. We're chatting to Andreas, who is one of the contestants on uh, Lone Australia Season 2, Wednesday nights on SBS, or you can catch up on SBS Demand. Andreas, the hunting part of it for me, I, that, that's probably... Because I, I, I love a bit of extremeness, I love a bit of adventure, but then hunting the food, is that something you had to learn a skill before you went into Alone? You go, OK, I watched Season 1, I've seen all the American versions, I know what I've got to do, or is that something that you had a skill in? Probably won't come as a surprise. This is something I do... Like I've done it for a long time. So the, the step for me, the step between fishing and hunting is not that far. Uh, and fishing, I grew up with. Like I, I would have fished since I was like four or five years old. My dad would take me out. We would go fishing. We would, you know, catch fish for the table. And there's, not, there's no better feeling than when you're a kid, you're out, you caught yourself a trout, you brought it home to the family. Uh, Mum and dad cooked it up and you sort of had a, a family meal from something you have harvested or, 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 or fished or whatever. And then when I moved to Australia, um, the, hunting, the hunting here is 
uh, very accessible in, in relation to Sweden. So I didn't hunt before I went to Australia, but mm-hmm. I, I've been hunting with a bow and arrow for maybe 15 years now. Wow. Um, and that, that's just, just where I get my protein from. Uh, I'm trying to be as self-sufficient as I can. The more food I can gather, the less I need to buy. The first thing you did when you got back from the South Island of New Zealand, you've been plucked out of the wilderness. Was it a hamburger, a vanilla slice? What was it, Andreas? There wasn't a meal where I went, oh, my God, I can't wait to eat that. What I did do is, like, I I used to study in New Zealand many years ago, up (laughs) on the North Island. And one of the things I really enjoyed when when I did that was something called a power fritter. And power fritter is something you can't get in Australia. So I literally, as soon as I... As soon as I, you know, got out of there, I was like, okay, I'm going to get myself a power fritter. And Can you tell us yeah, what that what is? That? What is it? Uh, so a power fritter. So, do you know in, in Australia we've got abalone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Devon or, yeah. yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, no, no. So abalone is ab- the ab- seafood. Oh, abalone. Yeah, ab- Sorry, not bologna. Yeah. Bologna. I thought I was going to Judge no, no, Judy. No, no, no. Abalone. Yeah, no, no, abalone. Abalone. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how that's white in the flesh. New Zealand got their own version called power, which is a black version. So that's the... Power is that seafood, and what you do, you take it, and they process it, and then grind it up, and then they grind that up in a batter, and they make a little, like a little, like a fritter, and they fry that up. Oh. So it's sort of quite a heavy fried meal, but it's seafood, and it's delicious. Like power is amazingly good. Oh. There you go. I probably would have had a battered sav, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, Andre, <laughs> Andreas, mate, we cannot wait to watch more of you yes. on the telly. Uh, SBS on Wednesday nights or on demand. Uh, mate, you are better than most. Uh, congratulations on firstly just getting on the show and what you're doing, mate, and thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. The Gina and Maddie Podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.